Why are these tools so popular? I'm about to show 10 tools that will make your leather crafting life so much easier. Do you want a pattern weight that's versatile enough to do more than just be heavy? Leather weights. Ordinary leather weights aren't very heavy. Ordinary leather weights are round. Ordinary leather weights have a clumsy handle on the top. Ordinary leather weights must be used vertically. This is not an ordinary leather weight. The Mascon and ZB weight goes beyond what a normal leather workshop weight can do. Uh, these weights are solid 1018 steel. These are four pounds, five ounces. Brass, four pounds, 10 ounces. Four inches long, two and a quarter flat right across. They're small, but mighty, and that's a good thing. Instead of a grab handle or a knob at the top, we opted for a finger hole, and that's very easy to grab and allows the weights to be used in any orientation. This way, this way. The footprint is compact, which makes it ideal for doing its job, but staying out of the way. Because the finger hole goes from vertex to vertex, it makes the weight really easy to lift up from the horizontal position. Some great uses for the mask on a ZB weights. Uh, here's one weighing down floating pockets where you're stitching holes or punching holes for stitching. Weighs that down, doesn't move at all. Also anchoring patterns like that while you're tracing them like this, you get the idea. Also, if you're gluing with some barge cement and you need to apply some pressure, glue, glue, like so. And because of their unique shape, these weights can be used vertically, horizontally, depending on what you're doing. They can stack like so, like so. Yes, there are tons and tons of uses and I can't go through all of them obviously. So let's go on to the next tool, which is over here. Let me grab them, hold on. The Mascon and ZB Leather Master Series is a special set of tools designed from the ground up. We noticed that there aren't rulers and squares specifically designed for leather craft, and we wanted to change that. It was our aim to create something very special and unique to what we do in our leather workshops. Too often we've seen generic squares and rulers that function inadequately for leather, and we wanted to specifically design tools that would become indispensable workhorses in our shop and yours. How about a metal square that's geared to leather crafters instead of carpenters and woodworkers? The leather master square. All right, what we've got here, we've got imperial on one side, metric on the other. This is the front of the square, I suppose. Each arm is 10 inches long. Great practical size for all of the leather stuff that we do on pattern making and when you're working with leather itself. One arm is, whoop, nope. One arm is one and a half inches. The other is one and a quarter inches. One eighth inch thick. Uh, both arms feature strap hole templates, which can be easily lined up to, and I'll show you, look, doop, doop, like this here. And the one and a half inch arm here, has got these guides for setting your strap cutter. One of them humdingers right there. Each arm has a little spot right there. You see where it says center? Also right here, center. So you can find the center just like this. Rounded corners all the way around so that you don't scratch your leather. And now we're on to the back, I guess, or the front, depending on which way you want to look at it. We've got imperial measurements back here on the inside. Two graphs. This one here is your leather stitch holes for three, four, five, and six millimeter, just to give you an idea of what it might look like. And over here, we've got leather thickness chart, the actual conversions for your leather thicknesses. Is that upside down? Wow, you get the idea. Let me show you real quick how these centering holes work. Let's say that this is a belt that you're working on. You can set that there like that, bump this to the tip, and let's say you want a hole every, every inch but you can do whatever you'd like. You wanna start off at two inches, you put a hole there, a hole there, a hole there, a hole there, and now you've got your marks. Easy peasy. All right, what's next? Oh, oh before I go, these are uh, made out of hard anodized domestic 6061 aluminum and laser engraved. Oh, speaking of the width here, I got an awesome little party trick for you at the end of these four master rulers and squares. They all kind of do something pretty unique.
Stay tuned. Would you like to have a ruler that does more than simply measure from point A to point B? Next up, this one. This is a unique and incredibly functional centering rule layout that will make you wonder how you ever lived without it. First off, the basic, we have imperial and metric on this side, but this is where the fun starts, the centering rule part. Uh, let me show you real quick. I'm always trying to find the center, especially when I'm doing patterns and in leather, but like we want to know the center, throw that sucker on there like that. If you look over here, we got seven inches. We just go to the bottom and right there's seven. Boom. Boom. Center. Centering rule. All these tools are going to be an eighth of an inch thick, uh, hard anodized domestic 6061 aluminum, laser engraved, and they're all made in San Diego, California, United States of America. They all have the rounded corners and they all have centering holes for doing your punches. Uh, centering hole. Let me show you. Let me show you again. Boop, boop. You want some holes every inch? One two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera. And there you go. One, two, three, four, right down the center. I also did a full designated video just on these two rulers right here. It's on my YouTube channel. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw a link down in the description. How about a square and ruler combo that are small enough to be super convenient instead of super annoying? Let's do these two together. The mini rule and the mini square. Very, very similar to the bigger ones, just smaller. Let's go with the square first. We've got imperial and metric scales on both sides. On this side, metric on the inside, imperial on the outside, and vice versa on the back or front. Each arm is six inches long, which makes it very practical size for speed, agility, smaller projects, or for areas that are really too small for the larger size square. One arm is five eighths, one arm is a half inch. Again, eighth of an inch thick. Both arms, as before, have the strap holes, so you can measure this for your strap holes. The mini rule also has the strap holes, eighth of an inch thick, three quarter inches wide, six inches long. Here's an interesting thing with this thing right here. We've got imperial, metric, but if you like to measure things from the top, and you want to use metric, well then you're kind of backwards. Well, all you have to do is flip it over and it starts over here, zero, and you can go this way. If you like to measure imperial at the top, flip it over and it's up here or vice versa if you like to the bottom. So we have it so that whatever your preference is, you just flip it over. Center hole mark here, here, same with here and here. Also, on the website, we offer these in bundles where you can get these two together, these two together, or all individually, whatever you like. So again, link in the description. I almost forgot. How about that party trick I was mentioning earlier? Let's do that real quick. Cutting straps. We all have some of these, right? Yep. Half inch, five eighths, three quarter, one, one quarter, one and a half. Well, guess what? We got you covered. Half inch, five eighths, three quarters, one inch, one and a quarter, one and a half. They're all right here on all these, all different widths. On the end of the Leather Master Square, we've got some fine tune adjustments here. Are you ready to make your leather glue work better than it's supposed to? Ruffers. These have been referred to as functional art. They're used for roughing the surface to maximize the potential when you're gluing. Uh, they work by creating more surface area by lifting the fibers, which allows greater glue coverage and deeper penetration. This gives the contact cement a better surface to grab onto, which in turn makes for a better bond that stabilizes the leather seam for easier stitching. These are an indispensable tool for every leather workshop. They're completely handmade to our exacting standards. My son, Nick, he makes these start to finish right here in Williamsburg, Virginia. Let me explain a little bit about how these work. See, see like this. Let me, let me look. See this side of the leather is smooth. This side of the leather is porous. If you put glue on this side, that glue is not going to go through this side. It'll go through a little bit, but not like we want. So in steps the leather rougher. 
like so. With every leather rougher, we also send a brass brush to clean that off. The texture portion of this rougher is tungsten carbide and is incredibly strong and long wearing. And remember, every single one of these is handmade, so they're all gonna be a little bit different. Beautiful and unique. No two will be the same. Again, truly functional art. What's up next? Wouldn't it be nice to have circle templates comparable to the huge oversized versions and at the same time save valuable workshop space? Four, one, two, three, four. Nesting double art tools. Each a precision cut from 1.8 solid 6061 aluminum or of course solid brass that can be used for marking, cutting, pattern making, and they're thick enough to use as cutting templates directly on your leather, but they're not so thick that they interfere with your knife. Because of the clever design, they take up far less space than full circle templates. This is especially nice in a small shop where space is at a premium. How would you like an anvil that's perfect for everything, yet still easy to move around? The shop plate anvil. This handy little anvil is a versatile benchtop work companion. It's a great example where form meets function. It's the perfect size for an arbor press stamping surface. Uh, hold on, let me show you. Just toss it right here, grab some leather, stamp, bam. It's small enough to live on your workbench and be at the ready for any hardware or rivet setting you might need to do. It also features rounded edges, a groove, so it's easy to pick up off the bench. Makes it very, very mobile. It's made from solid 1018 rolled cold steel, nine and a half pounds. And the dimensions, right about seven inches, by right about five inches, one inch thick. Are you ready to set copper and brass rivets like the pros? Copper rivets. That's 14 gauge, 12 gauge, nine gauge. And I have set thousands upon thousands of rivets. These are just some of the clippings of the rivets I've set. Every single rivet I've set in my life, the rivet setter was made by Mason, my son. Hold on. Chloe, what are you doing? Speaking of Mason's Forge, here it is here. I'm working on a roof here in the front. Let's, uh, let's go take a look. Working on a batch of setters right now. Let's find Chloe. Oh, there she is. Hey, baby. I grabbed a couple he's working on. One of the steps looks like this. Then he gets these champers on there. Each one handmade, double-sided by the way. One side for nine gauge, this one. One side for 14 gauge, the most often two used. Polished, chamfered edges, hand hammered. Every single one of those marked is hand hit by his hammer. Another time, these come in really handy, which I mentioned before, setting rivets. These are really, really good. A question I get all the time, these holes in the side, these are emergency access holes. This hole goes into this hole. So if something does go wrong, you can put something in there and get something out of there. To be honest, out of the thousands and thousands of rivets I've shown you, I've never had to use one of these access holes. How would you like to save hours a week while being even more accurate than ever before? Last, but obviously not least, we have the bump jigs. Standard set includes eight inch by one inch, quarter inch bar, half inch by half inch, four inch arms square, half inch, quarter inch, four inch squares, and available in aluminum or brass. Now these tools have saved me countless hours over the years, which is why we came up with this whole concept to begin with. There are so many things that you could do with these three tools. I can't go over all of them in this video. However, I did do a designated video showing a lot more, and yes, I'll toss the link down in the description. A lot more inclusive video there. But let me show you a couple of examples that you can do real quick with these. Let's do some squares first. All right, let's pretend this is a wallet that you're making and you want to put a pocket right here and you need to glue up as we showed before. So just take a square, 
put it here in the corner, bump that up. Oh, you see what I did there? Bump, bump jigs, bump that to there, mark it, bump that to there, mark it. And with your trusty rougher, now you know where to rough. Now just put some glue on it. Next we have stamps. Hold on a second. We got some letter stamps, alpha stamps, your 3D stamps, some smaller alpha stamps, some logo stamps. So let's say you want to put something in that corner right there. Just put that bump jig right there. Put that bump jig right there. Put that logo right there. And you can either use the Arbor Press or if you have some stamps with the screw handle. Whoop! Screw handle. You could take that stamp put right there in the corner like that and whack it. Of course, put it on your anvil first. You can line up your alpha letters. Again, push handle, you can hit them. Or if you did all of this on top of the Arbor Press, done. Same with the small alpha letters. Just line them up, hit them with a maul or on the Arbor Press, all lined up perfect. All right, well, let's say you want to put these three out here in the middle somewhere. Let's use the bar. Put a bump jig here, put a bar here, and you're lined up. Speaking of the bar, let's say you want to cut this off. Just bump that right there. Take your ruler there, cut. Perfect 90 degrees. Or if you're doing a bunch of small things, same thing here. Bump that there, take your smaller square, bump that there. Perfect, 90 degrees. All right, let's say you wanna get these pretty curves up on the top of here when they're not there yet. Let me find you an example. Right there. We wanna make those curves prettier. Take your bar, arc jig, bump that there, bump that there. Line that up there, and look at that, a pretty curve. Those are just a few examples, many more on that video, like I said before. Remember, on our website, we also have some bundles available, like you can get the arc jigs and the bump jigs together, aluminum, brass. Well, you get the idea. Do you want more in-depth and comprehensive details on the rulers and the bump jigs? Like I said before, got some videos for you. Click on one of the thumbnails that are somewhere up on the screen. Take you right to it.